Hi everyone, today I'm going to demonstrate Seamless Receipts, which is the next generation of the tax receipting app for Salesforce. Seamless Receipts includes a bunch of functionality to create custom PDF templates for your receipts, as well as uh, custom email templates to send those receipts out with, a few other new features that I'll point out along the way. So after you install the app, um, you should have the option in your app menu in the top right to choose tax receipts. And then you'll have tabs here for opportunities or donations, depending on how you've labeled it, documents, and tax receipts. Um, if you are going to use the standard templates that come out of the box, uh, the first thing you'll want to do is go into documents and upload your signature and URL files. I've actually already uploaded them, so I'll just open them in new tabs. Um, but uh, in your case, you'll, you'll need to upload these. Next, you'll go to Tax Receipts and press the New button. This will bring you to Stage 1 of a wizard for creating receipts. Before you can create any receipts, you'll need to go to Settings. And there's a few settings here I'll point out. First, the, so the, the, the setting file must be called current. The app is going to look for a setting called current, and if you don't have one, it won't work. You'll need to enter your charitable registration number here as you want it to appear on the receipt. You'll need to enter the first receipt number that you're going to issue uh, with the app. And we'll also uh, edit the signature and document URL files. We'll go ahead and do that. Um, for the URL, you can just go to the very end where all the X's are, delete all those X's, and then from your logo file, just take the ID that comes after salesforce.com slash. So I can copy that to my clipboard and paste it in. So that's my logo. For my signature, I can do the same thing. Um, you can also, if you want to, view file. And then copy everything from force.com. So starting with the slash, where it goes slash servlet all the way to the end. So I'll copy that and drop it into my signature file. This is the same functionality that we had in the old version of the app. Uh, the new features I will point out, um, we now have this email template ID. So if I just copy this template ID, um, the easiest way to see the template is just to copy it and then change your URL so that after salesforce.com slash you have that template ID and it'll bring you to this default tax receipt template. And you can see what the template looks like and you can um, easily modify it or create a new one. Um, you'll also notice there is this custom template VF URL. So what you can do is you can create your own Visual Force templates. So in the setup quick find, I'll go to Visual Force Pages. Um, I've already got, there's already templates that come with it, receipt template and receipt template, no PBA. Best way to create your own templates is simply to copy all this markup and create a new file. When you do, uh, you will just wipe out this tax receipts NPSP underscore underscore so that, for example, on donor name, instead of tax receipts NPSP underscore underscore tax receipt underscore underscore C donor name, just wipe out that tax receipt NPSP and just start with tax receipt underscore C donor name. Once you have your uh, custom Visual Force template prepared, you'll click preview and you'll want to copy everything starting from HTTPS all the way to slash apex slash. Don't copy the actual receipt template name. I'll mention how we do that in a few minutes. But you just copy everything from HTTPS to slash apex slash. And you can populate this custom template VF URL uh, with that. Uh, worth pointing out that the email subject line and email body uh, settings are depreciated. They don't do anything anymore. And that's because we now have this email template ID. Last new feature I'll point out 
is this field send PDFs without email to. And I'm going to put in my email address. Uh, this is useful if you get a large volume of, um, of receipts that you need to print and mail manually that can't be emailed. By sending yourself an email of those files, uh, it's much quicker to, to print them, much quicker than opening a whole bunch of donor records to find it. So I'll save that. Um, for this feature, if you have um, a Gmail, um, if you use Gmail, uh, Gmail, I know after a certain number of files, certain number of attachments, we'll just put them into a zip file. So it's much easier to download and print them that way. Okay, now that we have our receipt settings set up, I'll go ahead and create a couple of new donations. Um, you'll need to use, if you're using this right out of the box, you'll need to use the receipable donation record type. If you have other record types uh, that you use, just make sure that these receipt fields here, receipable amount, receipt to, receipt queue, personal benefit amount, receipt rationale, and receipt, make sure all of those are on the record type you use. But I've bundled the app with a record type so that you can uh, get started right away. I'll call this test donation number one. I'm going to link it to Testco. I'll make it for today, $100. The stage needs to be a closed one stage. So it might not actually be labeled closed one, but when you set up those stages, you need to indicate, uh, you know, there'll be a certain stage that you indicate as closed one. Um, if the donation has not been closed one yet, if it's a potential donation or a pledge donation, it's not ready for a receipt. Put in my receipable amount of $100. I'm going to receipt to the account, but you can also receipt to the primary contact role. Um, if you're going to do contact role, make sure you include a primary contact role. The receipt queue is going to be now. If this was a recurring monthly gift, we'd probably want to set the queue to year end, but for this we'll do now. Uh, this receipt field, we're going to leave blank. If a donation has a receipt, it doesn't get a new, uh, a new receipt, obviously. Finally, um, for personal benefit amount and receipt rationale, I'm going to leave $0 for personal benefit amount. If there was a personal benefit amount, I might describe what the personal benefit was in receipt rationale. Um, if this was a gift in kind, I could use receipt rationale uh, to indicate what the goods were and who appraised them. If you do that, um, then the app will issue um, one receipt for every donation that has a receipt rationale. The reason for that, um, or to put that another way, if we leave receipt rationale blank, we can issue one receipt for multiple donations. But if we have a receipt, um, if we have a receipt rationale, it won't issue one receipt for multiple in-kind gifts. Uh, it'll just be um, one, one receipt per donation. But for this one, it's cash contribution, no personal benefit, so I'll just save it. And I'll just make a copy of this because I actually want to have two donations in here. So I'll call the other one test donation number two, and maybe it'll be $200. The reason why I'm entering two donations for Testco is I want to show you how we compress them into a single receipt. And again, to compress to a single receipt, we need, um, it needs to be a cash contribution with no personal benefit. So no receipt rationale. Okay, now we have some donations. So I'll go to create a new tax receipt. So now you can see I have two donations from Testco, $100 and $200. They're both uh, 2019 donations, and the receipt queue is now. So up here at the top, you see by default, it's going to issue uh, donations from this calendar year that are scheduled for now. I could also, if I still had some year-end receipts, I could save these ones and just do my 2018 year-end receipts. Um, in this case, since I don't have any, it's not going to do anything. Um, but just to point that out. Another thing to point out, this receipt pending view you see here is actually an opportunity list view. So if you're cleaning up your opportunity list views, please don't delete receipt pending or this 
first step of the wizard is going to look very funny. Anyways, I'll go ahead and create records. This creates uh, records for those tax receipts. The next thing I need to do is hit this button in the bottom right, next, create PDF. And now you can see um, I've created this receipt for Testco. If I open it up in another tab, I'll just show you some details of it. So the first thing you'll notice, there's a checkbox that says needs PDF that is checked off. Um, and having that checked off is what puts it in this list view. Uh, the receipt rationale just defaults in because we left it blank, cash contribution with no personal benefit. And because it's a cash contribution with no personal benefit, we were able to take both the pending 2019 receipts and compress them, uh, sorry, both the 2019 donations and compress them into a single record. Last thing I'll point out is this pick list that says receipt template. Um, I'm not doing anything with it in this configuration. But recall when we talked about creating your own custom Visual Force templates, I'll just go back to the settings file to remind you. Remember I talked about putting the beginning of the URL here, so it'll be your Salesforce URL slash Apex. And let me just show you. Recall we went to Visual Force pages, created some custom, custom uh, template page. So looking at the URL, everything from HTTPS to slash Apex slash, all of that would go in your settings file here. Then in the receipt template field, you would put, let me find it, the actual name of your template. So uh, maybe you have donors that have, you have a preferred language field, English or French. Um, then using something like Process Builder, every time a receipt is created, we could look for the donor's preferred language and we could specify a receipt template on the receipt record that corresponds to their preferred language, either English or French. Anyways, little segue there. We'll go back to the wizard. And we're in step two, create the PDFs. So I'll hit this create PDFs button. Um, now that that receipt is no longer there, it's still in my quick find. So if I open it up, I'll just point out that that needs PDF field um, is no longer checked. And we now have in notes and attachments um, this, this receipt, tax receipt for $300. The last step is to email these to your donors. Um, and remember, uh, when we looked at the settings file, there was a email template ID. That email template um, can sort of said thanks for your donation. And um, if we have contacts with email addresses, uh, not accounts, contacts with email addresses in here, pressing this button will email the receipt to them. Um, the emails will be sent with one and one receipt only. So the implication is if you have a donor, if you have receipts in here, multiple receipts going to one donor, pressing this button will send that donor multiple emails. So if you end up with, for some reason, maybe a donor made a bunch of different in-kind contributions, um, you might wanna send those receipts manually. If you do, once you've sent it, just uncheck this needs sending and it'll clear it out of your queue. Um, in my case, I, in that settings file, remember I said send PDFs without email to, and I put in my email address. Oops. Um, so in step three, if I do this, for, for this receipt, it's an account. It's not a contact. They don't have an email address. But if I hit this email button, it'll actually send the email to me. So that is pretty much it for the flow. We can see now receipt number one for test co the needs PDF and the needs sending is, is wiped out because it's been emailed to me. The receipt is right here and, uh, and it should be good. But let's say, let's say it's not good. Maybe the donor calls up and says, hey, you put the receipt in the wrong amount. I didn't send you $300, I sent you $400. Sometimes mistakes happen. Um, what we can do is, is we, can, we can edit this and then replace the receipt. So let's say test donation one was actually a $200 donation. Um, it's actually important that I update the receivable amount field because that's 
what gets summarized on the receipt, not the amount field. They might be different if there was a personal benefit amount. So I'll just update the donation. I'll go back to my receipt number one, and there's this button here, Manage Receipts. I can hit Cancel Receipt. That doesn't really do much. It just updates the receipt record to show that it's been canceled. But if I hit Replace Receipt, that does a bit more. What it will do is it'll void out receipt number one, and it will reprocess all those donations, create a new receipt record, and then I can put the PDF on it. So if I hit Replace Receipt, you can see on my recent items, receipt number one is now canceled. We now have uh, receipt number two for Testco for $400. So I'll just create the PDFs. And then I will email this. Um, you know, if you're doing a one-off, maybe you don't need to email it to yourself. Maybe you just uncheck needs sending. And then when you refresh that page, it'll be cleared out. But for my receipt number two, you can see the donations are now tied to receipt number two. Receipt number one indicates it's been canceled. Um, and if I go to notes and attachments and look at receipt number two, there's a note on here that it replaces receipt number one. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found the demo helpful, and I hope uh, this uh, this this new tax receiving tool, Seamless Receipts, uh, will give people the ability to customize their branding, their PDF templates, and their email templates, um, so that when you acknowledge your donations, you do it kind of with the right voice and the right brand uh, that you've developed for your nonprofit. Thanks a bunch, and have a good day.